good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. What a beautiful way to start our week with worship of God and music to center us. Glad that you're here today. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we continue. A welcome to those who are joining us on Facebook. And we have added some new mics to our system, so would appreciate, especially from our viewers on Facebook, if they could give us a little bit of feedback during this time of uh, adapting them into our system. And uh, then today also is our noisy offering. Uh, so at the beginning of the children's time, uh, we'll be uh, collecting, making a little noise uh, for, uh, to go to local food pantries. And then Sarah has an announcement for Vacation Bible School and its life. All right, we are T minus eight days from our uh, on the case vacation Bible school. We currently have 20 students registered. Um, so thank you all who have registered your kids. Um, if you have neighbors or grandkids or anyone else um, ages three up through about sixth grade, if that would be interested, please uh, see Liz or I for the registration link so we can be prepared for those numbers. We would not turn anyone away, but it's helpful if we have a list um, of people who are attending prior. Thank you to everyone who brought jars and t-shirts. We are good and covered there. So thank you for that answer to prayer. We, we covered those needs. Um, there will be a sign up genius going out hopefully tomorrow um, with some things that are needed for the meal um, that will help us to be able to allocate as much of our budget as possible to act to the programming. So if anyone is able to donate any of those food items, um, when you look at the Sign Up Genius, there, there will be a brand of item, um, and that brand is brand specific. We ask that you please do not substitute because we do have some students who have different allergies, so we know that those brands are going to be safe for all of our students. So if you do sign up for an item, please do go with the specific brand that is listed on the, on the Sign Up Genius. And then finally, I just ask you to pray for all of us. This is a new curriculum for us. It's a new, um, it's a new company that we're using, um, so it's one that we're not all as familiar with, but I know it's going to be amazing, and the kids are going to have so much fun, and they're going to learn about God's love. Um, and the adults and the helpers are also going to learn about God's love. We learn just as much as the kids that were par participating with us. So please pray for us um, as we go through next week. Thank you very much. Are there any other announcements? Then I invite you to stand and join me in our order of confession and forgiveness found on page two in your worship folder. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. shepherd from the southern village of Tekoa is called by God to preach against Israel, the northern kingdom, in a time of economic prosperity. Today's reading illustrates how Amos' stinging criticism of Israel alienated him from those in authority, including King Jeroboam and the priest Amaziah. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. 
I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam and the sword. Then Azamiah, the prophet of Bethel, said to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all these words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Azamiah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at the at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Azariah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and I do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by lines, and you yourself shall die in an unclean land. And Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Amen. Having heard the harsh words of Amos, we join together in Psalm 82, which pleads with God to bring justice to this and every nation. Like the Amos passage, the psalm assumes that God should stop any partiality to the wicked. The psalm for today is Psalm 82. The congregation will sing the refrain and the cantor will chant the song. <laughs> The letter to the Colossians was written to warn its readers of various false teachings. The first part of the letter is an expression of thanks for the faith, hope, and love that marked this community, including a prayer for strength and courage. The second reading is from Colossians in the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all, all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the world of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, 
so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from his greatest, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. According to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So, likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave it to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spent. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite our kids forward. Oh, you think we can make a little noise today? All right. Are you up for the challenge? Okay. It'll be easy. All right. Oh, good. You, well, you're right. It is easy. <laughs>
All right, good morning. How are you guys today? Good, having a good summer so far? Yeah, me too, me too. And are you all excited for Vacation Bible School? Yeah, you're going to be on the case. On the case, yeah, that's the name of it, on the case. I, you, I just heard a story about Jesus and a lawyer, and do you know what we name that parable? Do you know what a parable is? Yeah, and it's, it's not just a story that Jesus tells. Jesus is trying, do you think Jesus just tells a story because it's, oh yeah, it's to teach a lesson. So what did you learn? Did you learn anything from it? like a brother or sister. <laughs> Sometimes our enemies are pretty close to us. Yeah, isn't it hard to get a lesson from my brother or sister? Yeah. Anything else you learned from this story? Do you know why, uh, what, what stuck out for me is that the, do you know the, the lawyer asked the question, asked the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said, well, what do you know? Just like I asked you a bunch of questions. What do you know about this story? And did the lawyer give a good answer? Yeah, he gave a correct answer. It was good. Do you remember what the answer was? Yeah, right. Yes, absolutely. Love the Lord your God with everything you got. Heart, mind, body, soul, everything. And who else? Your neighbor as yourself, right? Now, was the lawyer, he had a good answer, right? Do you think he should have just stopped there? <laughs> well, no. He, you know, he said, I want to justify myself. Do you know what it means to justify? All right, well, that's why I brought these bricks up here. Now, if I had a wall that kind of looked like this, maybe like that, you think, you think it's going to stand, is it a nice, strong, sturdy wall? Is it going to stand very, not going to take much. <laughs> Do you want to straighten it out? Okay, so justifying it is exactly what you want to do. You want to straighten it all out. That's what the lawyer did. He wanted to justify himself. He wanted to make sure. He had a good answer. Now he just wanted to make sure that it was all neat and tidy in a line. Now, is my wall stronger? Yes, it is. Well, it's, it's a cardboard wall. <laughs> what do we expect? So he, he asked the question, well, who is my neighbor? And that's where we get the story about the, the um, guy who gets beaten up. And so, so what do you think then? It means to justify that that our that if we love our neighbor as ourselves and we love God with our all of our being, Jesus tells this story, and then he says, "Do you go and do likewise?" So that tells us a little bit more about just who our neighbor is, right? Who is our neighbor? Are you my neighbor? Yes. If you saw me lying on the road, beaten up, do you think you'd stop to help me? Yeah. I think you would. I think you'd say, hey, Mom, Dad, pull over. I think that's Pastor Connie. Wouldn't you? I hope so. I hope so. So when we think about God and loving God with our total being, we're always going to be asked, do more than what more than what we expect. We just can't like glide on by. Otherwise, we start looking like like this. We become complacent, lazy, kind of unsteady, <laughs> and it all falls down. So we need to help each other find and see those in need. You know, 
Oh, we're going to build even a stronger wall. Wow, you guys, that's pretty cool. Now, is it even more justified? Is it stronger? Oh, that's so cool. You guys did this yourself. And we're better when we're together like this, aren't we? Doesn't it, will we help each other find our neighbors? And especially those neighbors who need our help? Yeah. So be on the lookout. Hopefully you won't find me laid up beside the road. But be watching for the ones who are in need. Because Jesus calls us to help them, our, all of our neighbors. So let's take our hands, fold them together, and bow our head and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and his stories that teach us and justify us and help us to see neighbors. All of our neighbors, especially the ones in need. We love you. You love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, what happened to my wall? Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the giver and sustainer of our faith, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Abraham Lincoln once said, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. I wonder if the lawyer questioned Jesus to test him, felt that way about Jesus. Was he testing out of disagreement or curiosity or both? Disagreement and curiosity, they're not mutually exclusive, are they? How do we respond? when we live in relationship with someone we don't like. At Synod Assembly in May, we participated in two learning sessions about sharing faith stories, growing younger, an ELTA program about the engagement of youth and young adults, and Braver Angel, a nonprofit dedicated to political depolarization. Local doctor Christopher Peters spoke about Braver Angel. I'd heard about it once, just in passing on a podcast, but I didn't know much more about it than that. And my first thought was, Braver Angel? That's not a Christian organization. But it's a nonprofit political organization. What are they doing here? Couldn't we find a religious organization to cover the same materials? Couldn't we support our Christian partners to help us with division? <laughs> now, those are my grumblings. And I got to know more about Braver Angel. I learned how Braver Angels was first introduced to the state of Iowa through two college students at Graceland in Lamoni, roommates, one a Democrat, one a Republican. Oh yeah, the year was 2016. Both leaders of their political party on campus. 
take a moment to think about who it is that you do not like. And then what would it take for you to get to know them better? <coughs> think about who it would be hard for you to hear God's message from. For me, it was learning from someone outside of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America or our partner churches. But as I learned more, I find that I am learning a lot from those who are outside looking in. I'm learning from scientists, from those who are new to Christianity, from those from whom I do not expect to learn from, I am learning from. Who is it for you? For the lawyer, Jesus' answer in the form of a story has the enemy as the hero, the Samaritan, the one who was merciful. For the priest, Amaziah, it was a prophet without credentials, a foreigner. For me, it was an outside agency talking to us about our differences. Who is it for you? A Democrat, a Republican, a neighbor, a stranger, an enemy. God takes a prophet, Amos, not from the trained one, but a foreigner, a farmer, a poor farmer at that. Amos is a sycamore fig tree tender. Can Amaziah the priest listen to this prophet? God gives Amos a plumb line interesting tool, an interesting tool that simply determines if a wall is straight, in alignment. Will the building stand? Is it justified? The priest Amaziah wants none of Amos's words, tells him, go back, go back to your own country, go back to Judea, earn your living there, and claims the territory for his king. Here's a simple tool, a simple tool that measures a vertical relationship. Notice how Amaziah, in his rebuke of Amos, never talks about the vertical relationship, but only the horizontal one, the king the land. Amos' message is that those relationships, those horizontal relationships will fall apart. They will fall in on one another just like what happens to the vertical wall when it is not properly in alignment. Amaziah did not want to hear this word from the Lord. He censors Amos. He hears Amos' prof prophecy not as a word from the Lord, but as a political message from a representative from the southern kingdom and orders Amos to stop. What is God God trying to teach us? What simple tool, what simple metaphor or story will the Holy Spirit tell us, teach us? God sends messengers like Amos, like Jesus, to help us to hear and to live in that vertical relationship with our holy, mighty, and God. The lawyer asks the vertical question about the relationship, the relationship that deals with inheriting eternal life. 
And Jesus tells him to do what, what to do in order to live. Amos tries to tell the northern kingdom that a plumb line is revealing the structural faults and relationships will collapse catastrophically. The priest Amaziah gets tripped up because Amos is not a prophet in the way the priest thinks prophets should be. Amaziah thinks of the professional prophet, the employee of the leader, the royal officer. But Amos is a farmer, a poor one. Do you know what it means to dress a sycamore fig tree? It means you poke or you scratch at the fig to try to uh, have it ripen. It's a tedious, time-consuming job left for those who have nothing better to do than to tend to a sycamore fig tree. But Amos pays attention to that vertical relationship and obeys God's command to bring a message that the neighbor does not want to hear, and that the neighbor rebels against. Like our parable from Luke, the book of Amos has two other visions before the one of the plumb line. Jesus, in his parable, has two examples of what neighboring does not look like, passing by, refusing to help the one in need. Amos's first two visions are visions of God's destruction, devouring locusts and consuming fire. And Amos pleads on behalf of Israel to forgive them, forgive Israel. And God listens to Amos and sends him with the third vision, the one of the plum line. I wonder if God is not teaching the prophets here through the plumb line as well. God reveals destruction through insects and fire, natural elements, then uses a plumb line <clears throat> to teach that when we don't pay attention to our vertical relationship with God, our neighbors and familial relationships collapse in on themselves. These relationships are woven together just as the relationship between mercy and justice, grace and truth, law and gospel, life and eternal life. They cannot be separated from one another. When we love our neighbor, we love God. When we love God, we love our neighbor. You know, things are good for us here at Christ the King. This is a good and faithful community. And yet, we can become too pliant and too flaky and comfortable. Can you hear a word of warning without misinterpreting it? Feeling threatened by it? Can we look at the plumb line and hold it up to ourselves and see where our relationships are falling in on each other and ask God for help. You know, this green megaphone, you know, possibly a popcorn holder, it's been a good community exercise for us. What do you want to say to our what words do you think God wants us to say to our neighbor? Words that reveal our vertical relationship to God and our neighbor? A few have responded. But what about the rest of you? From your lack of response, what conclusion should I draw? Do you have nothing to say to your neighbor? 
the megaphone is a bad idea? What do you think God wants us to say to our neighbors? I do. Let us learn from the ones we don't know very well, and maybe even the ones we don't like. Because you know, Jesus is headed to Jerusalem, and we all know what happens in Jerusalem. We know he dies there on the cross. We know he is raised to new life. Do we like the fact that God's Son died for us, served us, saved us by giving his own Son so that that vertical relationship is established in a way that cannot be broken? Through Christ and his cross, truth and grace are woven together in a love that moves us through sin, aligning us to stand straight and tall before God, because we lean on Jesus Christ, and we find ourselves a plumb line that sets us in line with God. me now as we proclaim and confess our faith as to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Gracious God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, correct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Direct the evangelical Lutheran Church in America by that truth and peace as this church prepares to gather and assemble. God of grace, Hear our prayer. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, volumes of verses. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. God of grace, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty. Hope where there is despair. Love in the face of neglect. Comfort where there is death and healing in illness, especially in Paris to the soul. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with one another.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Remembering, therefore, his act of healing, his body given up, his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth <coughs> will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <laughs> by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
may be seated and those who are receiving communion you need to increase those cups go ahead and pull that out now and uh, take the uh, peel off of the wafer portion and you can tap it as we pull that up this is the body of Christ given to
bless you ever continue to be with us. Strengthen you to live in the power of your grace, love, and forgiveness. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.